Glad you're back with me. I'm going to take a look at some cork picks going back to the 1920s up to the uh, 1970s. At the top row here, we have entirely Golden Age picks, except for this 351 at the end. Uh, from here over, these are all pre-1950, with the oldest being the, this, these here. And this uh, 351 with a cork, and this 351 with a cork. Now look at the shoulders and you'll see they're, they're asymmetrical, which tells me they were hand stamped. And this particular celluloid here, I know to be specific to, to the D'Andrea the company. Uh, it's a very distinct celluloid. You can see it better on the back there. As well as this one, and you can certainly see the, the shade differences in this one. Here's one in Army Brown. This is a gorgeous celluloid here, but it's the only pick I've ever found with that celluloid. It's a 349 shape with a cork added. And one of the reasons I prefer just to use the flat pick designations and denote whether they have cork or corrugation is because D'Andrea gave different pick numbers to the same shape, depending on whether they didn't or, or or did have some attachment to them. So if this was a plain pick, it would have been a 349. But then uh, I was changed to the 348C when it had cork. Now that could cause a lot of confusion because this is the actual uh, 348 shape in a flat pick. But when it's, it has a cork added, it's a 349C. So that should sound confusing because it is. So I'm just going to be using uh, the flat pick designations and note whether D'Andrea obviously added cork or some other feature that would change its designation. But we're not going to use that change designation to uh, eliminate confusion. Moving down to the second row, we're dealing with a mix of uh, Golden Age and post-Golden Age very uh, unique 368 and a half here with a cork on it and here's a variant thereof it's slightly smaller it may even be the uh, 347 and a half with cork but the 368 and a half 347 and a half were very similar now this one here is definitely a deandria shape but it's got that uh, granulated cork on it one more time, indicating that uh, prior to 1950, at various times, D'Andrea did use granulated cork, although I don't show evidence of that after 1950 at all. They always used natural cork, more than anyone else, so. Uh, let's go over to these four picks on the right here, all 351s with either a cork ring or cork pad, and obviously that's the ring and that's the pad. I want to point something out here. The inner diameter of this cork is different than that one. So it's possible that may not be a D'Andrea, but that's unknown. Uh, this pick here, cork pad, and this pick here, cork pad. And this has some asymmetrical uh, shoulders as well and may be a D'Andrea Golden Age with a granulated cork. Moving down here uh, to the last two rows, these are... The third row is uh, mostly post-1950, not Golden Age, but this fourth row has, has uh, probably a mix, most being from the Golden Age, especially in that celluloid there, which was uh, common in the 1930s. Now, this is a bizarre ring because it has such a large inner diameter uh, compared uh, to the uh, rest of the pick and compared to all these other D'Andrea picks that you see that have holes in it that we call cork rings there is a big difference between that inner diameter of the two take a look at that very significant difference and uh, I've seen that on one other pick and we'll probably come across that these are not all the cork grips I have uh, but this gives you a good idea of the shapes, at least 15 different shapes here. Look at these color patterns. This uh, Kahlua on ice, uh, whiskey on ice, or Slogan on ice, whatever you prefer to call it. I call it the alcohol group because uh, we've given affectionate names regarding alcoholic drinks. 
concerning these these white blotches in here are considered the ice, and obviously the darker patches are considered the uh, either the coke or the alcoholic beverage itself. If you were to stare down into a glass, that's what you would see. Over here is a couple of wheat straws. We're going to be seeing more of the uh, whiskey on ice and wheat straw when we get to uh, that particular shade of celluloid. Since so many gorgeous picks were made in different shapes with those types of celluloid. But uh, moving back down to the fourth row here, some of these may, uh, in fact, some are not D'Andrea. But uh, with this 337C here, this uh, is related to some other picks, and that's still up in question. This bottom row here, these four, this is an exclusive D'Andrea shape from the 1920s catalog that was removed. Here we see it on four different shades of celluloid, but all in a type of granulated uh, cork that D'Andrea, I see no evidence of having used. So this could have been copied by the Midwest Chicago manufacturer, this particular shape. Uh, again, that's unknown, though. There's a lot of unknown in vintage picks, but you know there's a lot that is known, too. Now, these three over here are very interesting because they have what seems to be cork on it, but it's not. It's just printed on there. And in the 1970s, when... Uh, Cork grips fell out of favor. D'Andrea, almost as a hoot, decided to print up some uh, picks that just had a printed image of a cork grip. And that's what he came up with. And these are actually quite rare, even rarer than coming across the authentic uh, cork grips, which is also rare. So I want to show you some more picks in other colors here uh, before we go that have cork grips. So stand by here while we make a little adjustment. And there, we have some white and color. This top row, these are all Golden Age picks. And notice how they uh, have this patina, like a bone color to them. In this particular case, though, that, that's an Iberoid. And there, it just about come into focus for a second. You know, that's become a problem here, and I apologize not be able to get a clear focus on these. Uh, but that is an Iberoid. And you'll notice all these different shapes here. Really diverse group. This is the only D'Andrea mosaic cork grip I have ever seen to this day. That's after over 25 years of collecting. Unusual to come across these solid colors with cork grips, but here you have them. So all D'Andrea top two rows. Bottom two rows, highly suspect. There may be a few D'Andrea in there. Uh, that have yet to be positively identified, but doubtful. Most of these are not D'Andrea at the bottom row here. Uh, this little star pick is in an early 1940s catalog that shows this star grip, uh, cork star grip, and that, that's a very rare pick. And as you can see, here's a rare 351 with gran granulated cork on it. Uh, this is a 359 shape, the Andrea shape, but it does have a granulated cork on it. And uh, it most likely is the Andrea, but again, it could be that uh, manufacturer that copied some of the Andrea's shapes. Really nice blue streaked pick over here. And here's some crescent grips, crescent cork grips. So we have cork ring, cork pad, half moon, uh, Three-quarter moon, cre uh, crescent grips, cork grips, and a star grip over here. Uh, various gauges on these celluloids. Here's one that's uh, opaque. Not quite a bone, but you can still see some light, little light pass through it. And uh, we'll be moving on, and in our next video, we'll catch up with cork or corrugated grips. That's it for cork grips right now. We'll be seeing more cork grips later on, but the next uh, video will feature corrugated. Thanks for stopping by.